This afternoon, we'd like to feature the Skywatcher 8-inch Dobsonian Telescope. This is one of the ones that's highly recommended as a great beginner's telescope. When they came out with these 10 years ago, they were priced at about $600. Now they've dropped below $400. The views are absolutely fabulous through these. Terence Dickinson in the Backyard Astronomer's Guide or Night Watch book calls this an overachiever in the telescope world. Once you've assembled yours out of the box and put it on the base, it should look something like this. The two plates at the bottom are held together in place with a, a bolt there. You don't want that too tight. You want this to be able to move. The whole idea with a Dobsonian telescope around friction and weight is that it moves nice and smoothly. It's not sticky and it's not slippery. But as you move it from object to object, it just moves nicely this way. This particular telescope, we've attached the uh, the finder scope on it, when you put this together out of the box, there is a small uh, O-ring that goes in here that allows it to pivot and adjust the uh, position of the, uh, the finder scope. I'm going to take the caps off of the finder scope. You can focus the finder scope by turning the front objective lens and then holding it into place with, uh, with the locking ring. So just adjust that until when you look through it, everything is nicely in focus. This afternoon we have a beautiful three-quarter moon up there in a blue sky and we're going to be using the telescope to point and take a look at this uh, moon here uh, even in the middle of the day. There's um, uh, the front cap that comes off of the, the telescope. Uh, you can see down in there the concave mirror on this particular reflector type of telescope. It's called a Newtonian with a Dobsonian mount. If you're looking at the moon in the evening and it's really, really bright, you can leave the main cap on and just take the smaller cap off uh, so you don't lose it. There's a little place for you to put the, uh, the cap and then take a look through, uh, through the telescope. Don't ever use the telescope to point at the sun unless you have a proper solar filter that covers the entire front of the telescope. The, uh, the way that the telescope moves uh, about is very simple and easy. You can tighten this up to hold it in position so it doesn't move too quickly. And now we're going to take the cap off and uh, use the telescope to see if we can find the moon. The first thing we'll do is look through the finder scope, get it pointed up there uh, in the direction of the moon, and then once we get it centered in the finder scope, then we can look in the eyepiece here. So I'm going to uh, try to line this up with the moon and uh, using the, uh, the finder, I found the moon. It's definitely not in focus, so I'm going to loosen off the, uh, the locking ring on this and look through the telescope, through the finder scope, and adjust that uh, until the moon comes nicely into focus. Okay, and, and there we have it. Now, once this is pointing at the moon, it should be reasonably close to find in the actual telescope, but there are some adjustments on the finder scope, so it may at this point be pointing in a little different direction than what the actual telescope is. So, as I look in the telescope and I look, it actually is pointing at the moon. It's not in focus, so I'm going to have to adjust the focus using these knobs and uh, bring it out, out, out a little bit, and now we have a beautiful view of the uh, the moon here in the afternoon sky. I'll center the moon so it's dead center in the eyepiece and then I'll look through the finder scope again and I'm just adjusting it slightly using these knobs so that the crosshairs in the finder scope also are pointing right at the middle of the the moon. When we move the scope to some other object then once again uh, the crosshairs in the finder scope will be pointing exactly at the position that uh, the telescope is. As everything moves from east to west in the sky uh, and the moon is, is rising, we'll gently move the scope up, 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 and, uh, and follow the moon throughout uh, the late afternoon and evening and uh, across the sky during the night. So that's uh, the basic functions of, uh, of using the telescope. We've started off with the 25 millimeter eyepiece here in the, in the telescope. That gives us 48 magnification. Uh, there is another eyepiece that comes with it. If you put a 10, 10 millimeter eyepiece in there, that gives you 120 magnification. And so you'll test different eyepieces to see what works best. Oftentimes the lower powered eyepieces are adequate and certainly right now with 48 times power, we're getting some very beautiful views of the moon. 